Hello and welcome to Hacks, where we try and simplify cybersecurity. Today we're on the Portswigger Web Academy. Uh, Portswigger is the sort of developers of Burp Suite. If you don't know what Burp Suite is, it's a web proxy like Zap um, from OWASP. It allows you to intercept, um, modify and do all sorts of crazy shenanigans with web requests. Um, and the academy is fantastic. They've got labs on literally everything that you need to know um, for doing web application testing. Uh, web app taste testing, tasting, mm, web app tasting, testing is isn't my strong suit, and I'm not going to pretend it is. But that's why we do these things, right? To learn. Um, so yeah, today we're looking at what's supposed to be the third lab, but I've I think it's the third lab from the perspective of going through the learning materials. So if you go through the learning materials, you are prompted to do labs, which are in a different order to the ones that you see on the screen. So the one I'm gonna be doing today is called SQL Injection Union Attack, Retrieving Data from Other Tables, which is this one here. So I've got this marked as the third one, but evidently it's the fifth one. So yeah, you have to, sort of bear with me i will put the name of the lab in the description of the video so hopefully that will help with searching and finding it um but yeah let's dive in so let's see what it has to say this lab contains an sql injection vulnerability in a product category filter the results from the query are returned in the application's response so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables to construct, uh, to construct such an attack, you need to combine some of the techniques you learned in previous labs. The database table, the database contains a table called users and columns called username and password. To solve this lab, perform an SQL injection attack that retrieves all usernames and passwords and use the information to log in as the administrator user. Seems fairly straightforward. Um, there's a vulnerability in the product category filter which we need to use to retrieve um, the username and password from the users table. Uh, so straight away, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to burp, turn intercept on, go back to my browser and head to accessories and that should give us the product categories filter. Now what we can do is we need to work out how many columns there are. So in order to do that, we need to send a query to the database um, and we'll use null data because it's recognized by all databases, SQL, Oracle, all those. And what we'll do is essentially put a single quotation mark in there to break the syntax and do union plus select plus null and then we'll comment it out. Oh, this should be sent to repeater. Sorry, send it to repeater. Um, so you can see there, we got the category equals accessories. We break the syntax. We start our union select null hyphen hyphen. And then what that should do is if there's one column, we'll get a 200 response saying it's okay. If there's more than one column, we'll get a 500 error until we substitute the nulls, um, to substitute the columns with the nulls until we get the right number. So let's send that, get a 500. So all we need to do now is we put a comma and do null again. And you can see there, we've got two columns. Um, brilliant. So now we need to modify the payload so that we retrieve the username and password from users. Um, this should be fairly straightforward. What we can do, well, first we need to make sure that both of these support string data, because right now, no, they could be anything. So what we'll do right away is we'll just put an A in there and send that. Okay, that's fantastic. And then we'll put an A here and we'll send that. Brilliant, so they both support string data or text. So that means that the usernames can go in one and the passwords can go in the other. Then we can steal them, log in, and we'll complete the lab. So all we really need to be, all we really need to be doing now is saying username union select username password 
from users table. So that's saying in the first column, we're going to select and put in users. In the second column, we're going to select and put in passwords from the other table in the database called users. Now, hopefully this works straight away. Brilliant. So if we go into our search box and search for administrator, you can see there we have the administrator username and password, which is now being rendered on the page. Um, what you can do as well is if you uh, show the response in your browser, you can even do it here, I think. Yes, you can render it. So what this will do is this will render it as if the browser was there. So you got your username and password. Um, I'm just going to copy that, throw it into Notepad quickly. And then I'm going to head back, to, I'm going to turn off my proxy. I'm going to head back to, whoops, the site and I'm going to go to my account. And I'm going to log in as the administrator. And that's it. Um, yeah. So all we did is we worked out. I mean, you can do this with Google Docs as well. It's, it's you probably shouldn't actually, but you can find sites that are vulnerable to SQL injection by searching for specific parameters. I won't say what just yet, um, but specific PHP parameters, and then you pop a single quotation mark at the end of it. And when you hit return, it will produce a 500 error, which suggests that the database isn't using prepared statements. It isn't um, structured properly. So then you cause the syntax to error because you can directly send commands to the database. And then what we did from there is we worked out how many columns there were. Um, although you can sort of guess it from the website, we worked out how many columns there were by sending null data to them. So is our column there it errored when we only sent one because the syntax was broken because it needs two columns then we sent two nulls to it and it gave us a 200 successful message then we enumerated or identified what the data of those columns was or what data those columns supported by sending it just a string of an a character an a character you can use anything you can write a word like test uh, provided it comes back with a 200 you know that it supports text and then we modified the query to replace those two tables with username and password from users table uh, which gave us the username and password which we were then able to use to log into the account and solve the lab yeah i hope that helps i'll try and make it as searchable as possible so you don't have to search for every single video um, but yeah, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, leave a comment and yeah, kind regards.